All right, Dolly Parton's music is just as iconic as Dolly herself. Mm -hmm. And her career has spanned decades. Decades. And this week, the curtain is rising on a world premiere musical based on Dolly's music. It's called Here You Come Again, and it's being performed at the Terrace Theater in Chester. And to tell us more about how it came to be, we are now joined live by Bruce Valange, another name and face you definitely know. Good morning, Bruce. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Yes, I am the human sunflower. You are. You are. <laughs> You're you love that. Actually, Dolly. <laughs> Dolly should have that title because you know everybody <laughs> loves her. She is sort of a sunflower. Bruce. And in the show, she sings about flowers. So oh, there you oh. go. Perfect. A perfect, a perfect tie-in. Yes, how apropos. <laughs> perfect. Bruce, what inspired you to write this musical about Dolly? Well, it was actually an idea by the lady behind you, Trisha Paoluccio, who plays Dolly, and she's played Dolly in a couple of other shows. But she had this uh, this notion about doing a show about a guy who's... Uh, it, kept, it came during COVID. We had this idea during COVID because we were all sitting at home working, you know, coming up with stuff. And it's about a guy who's a, a would-be comic who's never happened. He's working as a, a waiter at a restaurant in New York, a comedy club. And the club closes because of COVID. And he has to go quarantine in the attic of his parents' home in Longview, Texas, oh. where he has an intimate relationship with his imaginary friend, Dolly Parton. <laughs> he's, like, he's like a, you know, mega fan. And she steps out of a poster. And uh, basically, the, the subtitle of the show is How Dolly Saved My Life in 12 Easy Songs. Because he's kind of at the end of his rope, uh, sitting there, as a lot of us were in May of 2020, mm -hmm. before vaccines, when we were, we were all on lockdown. And, uh, and she basically, in the course of one night, gets him back on the road to where he needs to be. So it's a, it's a funny show, but it's also very sweet. And it encompasses all of those things that the Dolly has. Her, her unbelievable, uh, just, just optimism. You know, she's relentlessly optimistic. And, uh, and, and that, you know, that, that comes up to play. But she's also, you know, totally makes fun of herself. I mean, one of the hallmarks of her, you know, is that she knows that she's a construction. And she's, she's very well constructed. <laughs> yes, that's very true. And okay. it's not a shame to point that out or talk about it. Exactly. So, well, good for her, And these right? are all, all of her hits are in the show. I mean, she it's all kind of tied in sort of, you know, Mamma Mia-like. Oh, <laughs> what a great premise. Mm -hmm. So we have to know, uh, like the character in the show, are you equally a fan of Dolly Parton? Is that how this all came to be? You just oh, love I'm, the music? I'm a big fan. In fact, um, Many, many years ago, when you were tiny children, uh, mm -hmm. Dolly had a, a Sunday night variety show on ABC, which was called Dolly. And I uh, was one of the writers that was brought in when it, it started failing after the first couple of episodes. And it was actually kind of a disaster. But we had a great time doing it. And, and they tried to make a Carol Burnett. You know, she's not Carol Burnett. She's Dolly Parton. And she's very special. And so uh, we put her in special settings. We opened Dollywood, which at the time was this little thing, you know, with, with a clog dancing. And, and soap making, and now it's a theme park with roller coasters and timeshares. So, you know, she knows what she's up to. But we went and we opened it, and we did a series of specials, so I worked with her. Uh, and I've seen her off and on over the years. You know, I write a lot of the Oscar shows, and she's been nominated twice for and performed songs that she's written on the Oscars. So uh, we had a relationship, and uh, when we put the show together and we got a grant during COVID from a theater and started doing Zooms of it, we realized we had to go to Dolly to get the rights to the music. And I didn't know what she would think, but she loved it. And she's now our partner. That's, that's fantastic. Great. And Bruce was just mentioning how Dolly would start it off so small. I was there last spring, Bruce, and it is not small. It's like a town. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, yeah, I mean, it is a destination resort. It it's is. absolutely amazing. And I don't know how she has time when, when she, she said she wanted to be involved in this. I said, you know, I don't know how you, between, you know, curing leprosy and doing a moon landing, <laughs> how do you have time? I mean, the woman has a cake mix. Well, so, I don't that's think she true. Baked. I saw them in the store. Yeah, I, we were talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> Sponsored the Moderna vaccine. I mean, <laughs> she's all over the place. Now, Bruce, you shouldn't short sell yourself either because you have quite the storied career. Um, I want to take you back to when you were writing uh, for the Chicago Tribune and you met a then struggling nightclub singer. What was her name again? 
Bette Midler. <laughs> Bette, you know, it was never Betty. It was always Bette. But I met her. She was on Broadway. She'd come from uh, Hawaii. And she was, uh, I mean, she was, you know, our, our first joke was that she, it was tough being the only Jewish girl in the Samoan neighborhood. <laughs> she grew up in Honolulu where she was born. And then she came to New York and was in Fiddler on the Roof. And on vacation, she came to Chicago and did a nightclub act. And a friend of mine was in business with her and, and asked if I would review it. And I was knocked out. And I said, you know, you're very, I wrote a story about her and she called me and said she liked it. And I said, well, you're funny. You should talk more. And she said, do you have any lines? <laughs> and that was the beginning. And I, I, 50 years later, excuse me, my eloquence is overdue. <laughs> uh -oh. 50 years later, we're still doing it, Aww. you know, so uh, wonderful. What Great can I tell talent. You? And who, who is one of your favorite people you've worked with over the years? I know that that's a loaded question, but well, is you know, I was I was on Hollywood Squares for four years, mm. to the left of Whoopi, if that's possible. Yeah. I've, so I've been I've worked with Whoopi before and since. I'm going to go see her tomorrow on the View. I'm going to go uh, hang around with her backstage because I haven't seen her in a bit. And I'm in New York right now on the way up to Connecticut. So uh, uh, Whoopi, Billy Crystal. Uh, Robin Williams, I love. They were all in a movie that was made about me about 20 years ago called Get Bruce, which was a kind of documentary about what I do. It was produced by Harvey Weinstein, who never laid a hand on me. <laughs> Hashtag, why not me? Oh uh, and Disney, even funnier, Disney uh, distributed it. Wow. So, you know, I'm right up there with Princess Jasmine and, you know, the, the frog and all those <laughs> I love it. Okay. My proudest achievement. We, we have to just one more time tell everybody how they can come see the show okay. here in Connecticut. But to come, it's at the, uh, at the Norma Terrace Theater, which is in Chester, which is a little town on the river with great restaurants across from East Haddam, where the Goodspeed Opera House is. Mm -hmm. But this is a Goodspeed production. And it's in their smaller development house. And I did a show there a few years ago with Petula Clark's music that we had a great time. And it's it's just so beautiful up there. And the audiences are great. You know, they come from all around and they come down from Hartford up to New Haven and they wander off of their farms in deep river. <laughs> well, we are so excited that you are coming back to the theater in Chester. And we really hope everyone goes out to see it. So I know. we'll have all the information also on our website. But it has been such a pleasure chatting with you Bruce and laughing and you are just such a talented talented man and we are so grateful that you took the time to chat with us to get up in the morning <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> well we get up at 2 I'm not one so of my favorite things to do <laughs> on the vampire tip. well you nailed it so we appreciate it thank you so much thanks Bruce